to be gay. Juxtapose this with kids and kink can coexist. Kids and kink can coexist. I'm not saying that kink is inappropriate for kids. I'm saying they can and should coexist with each other. I'm going to have an aneurysm. I hate her demeanor. That fake ass, narcissistic. Like, y'all are so fooled by nice seeming people. Y'all are so fooled by a, it's okay to be gay. Nice little smile. Nice little cutesy bootsy voice. I'm sure Jeffrey Dahmer was quite lovely, quite charming before he snatched his victims up, right? And this is the problem. I said this in the last video. This is the problem with libs in general. They really respond to tone of voice over actual words. So they watch this and they don't see a woman who is talking about something entirely inappropriate with their children and talking about gender and sexuality to children and that being somehow harmful because she's doing it in that tone of voice. I wanted to talk about my identity and I'm struggling and I'm here to come out to you today, kids. See, if it was some nasty, grubby, older man talking about, all right, let me talk to you about my, what I like to have sex with. To kids, y'all would be shook. But because she has this, you know, wounded bird affect and she's nice and she's tilting her head down. She's shrugging. Y'all don't see a problem with it. Wake up. Hey, y'all. What's good? I'm back with another video. And today we got a bup a banner of a video, okay? So, Blair White, Let's right? Like, on. obviously, I don't agree with a lot of her politics. We've clashed. I got a whole Blair White saga playlist on my channel. You can go and peep that if you give a fuck. But here's the thing, man, is even someone like Blair, they're gonna be right every now and then. And a lot of people in the trans community, they just want to completely demonize Blair. I don't think that's okay, right? Like, she has uh, redeeming quality. She's still fucking trans at the end of the day. And she might have different opinions, but to I used to think she doesn't give a fuck. I feel like she cares. I feel like she cares, and that's why she gets, like, the way she does. Like, she gets so irritated if you listen. You can see, like, she, she plays it up, obviously. Every entertainer does. But you can see she's genuinely frustrated with what she's seen, right? So I do think she cares. And I think, like, yo, we need, um... As a trans community, we need to be more accepting of people on the other side of the aisle, right? Like, Blair's not the devil at the end of the day just because she has conservative politics. A lot of what she says, I disagree with, right? And there's a lot of clips from her video. If you go watch her video on this topic, it's going to be a lot of things that she's saying that I don't agree with and I did not put in this video. However, the things that she said that I think are spot on, we're going to go ahead and look at those clips and react to them and talk about it. Because this whole situation with queer kid stuff is not okay, man. And we're going to get a little bit more into it and like why that is exactly. But before I hit on that, I wanted to talk about the second clip in that little intro that I included where Blair was talking about how liberals or lefties, right? People that are on the left, they care more about tones than the words that's actually being said. I don't know why, but y'all have this soft ass pussy ass demeanor and y'all think anyone that is nice and friendly is fucking right. Dude, that's so stupid, motherfucker. Like, cause I don't respect that shit at all. If you come in soft, I ain't finna respect that shit. You gotta come with some edge to you. You gotta say it with your chest, right? You know, like, like if you not, if you can't even like speak in a way that demands attention, that demands respect, why the fuck would I give you attention or respect? But on the left, for some reason, they like pussy shit, and we need to change that, okay? Because most often times, the people that put on this little act, it's okay, team, begin, you know, all that shit, right? People that put on that act, they're usually, like Blair said, the narcissist. They the wolf in sheep's clothing, okay? Because no one is that fucking, like, like nice and bubbly and perfect, bro. That's a fucking act. Fuck that shit. Now, to address why is it weird to uh, make an LGBT kid show, not only that, like, they have, like, a nursery rhyme cadence, right? Like, we're talking about, like, this is not for children, right? This is being made for 
preschoolers or kindergartners, right? Or fucking toddlers, right? Like literal little ass children that don't need to think be thinking about sex or gender at all. And here's the thing. So if our argument is that queer people, gay people, trans people, they're the same as straight and cis people, right? We all just want to be loved and loved. We're all human, right? We're the same. There's never been needed to be a straight kid show, right? That doesn't exist. So why the fuck would it be a queer kid show? That doesn't even make sense, right? It's predatory, it's gross, and it's wrong. The kids that are actually queer, you know what? They know themselves, right? Uh, we seem to forget that all of us are fucking queer, right? And, and we grew up without fucking queer kids show and we still figured it out right so they're gonna grow up know themselves and seek out those things right but we don't need to target it towards kids that's a weird and literally plays into what the fucking transphobes and republicans are saying about us that we're predatory against children that we're groomers that we're pedos right stupid nonsense man let me ask you a question do you think that someone who says this? Kids and kink can coexist. I'm not saying that kink isn't appropriate for kids. I'm saying they can and should coexist with each other. Should also be the host of a children's show. Be given platforms like Good Morning America, TED Talk, Dove campaigns, be given awards in general for this behavior. I would personally say no, but you know, maybe I'm the one who's lost my mind here. Maybe I'm crazy. Nah, for once, Blair, you're the sane one. Yeah, uh, to answer your question, no, fuck this person. Fuck this weirdo, creep-ass pedo that wants to fucking talk to children like this, man. I, I'll get real riled up about any predatory-ass motherfuckers, especially when they're going after someone vulnerable and people as vulnerable as children, right? So, yeah, completely fuck this person. And also, you see the hypocrisy in, in the, the little TikTok. We're, and we're going to watch that whole TikTok as Blair reacts to it. We will react to it. But they said, I'm not saying that kink is appropriate for children, but it can coexist. Like, what? Dude, if it's not appropriate, it shouldn't coexist. They shouldn't know about it. You shouldn't be talking about it in relation to kink, kink and children. What the fuck? Say hello to Lindsay Amer, non binary host of the YouTube Kids channel, Queer Kid Stuff. Yes, that's the title. And yes, I also want to die upon hearing it. You're not alone in that. We're on the same page. It's a channel dedicated to teaching toddler and above aged children about LGBT topics. And it's done in a way that only a completely deranged and demented individual would find even remotely age appropriate. Queer Kid Stuff. And Rainbow Story Time. Hi friends, welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Linz. And I'm Teddy. Teddy. Today I want to talk to you about something that can be kind of hard for trans people like me. And it can be a little scary sometimes. Scary? Oh no, Linz. Like, like a monster? Actually, yeah, Teddy, it can kind of be like a monster. Today we're reading Me and My Dysphoria Monster. Monster? Oh no, Linz, I'm scared. So this is what I was talking about. The cadence and tone and demeanor that you're talking in, we're not talking about second graders, third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, which at that point it's questionable, right? For like, uh, like parents, you know, it's fine if a parent wants to teach an elementary school kid about queer shit. I think that's fine. But even for that, you know, for elementary school kids, it would be weird if a teacher or there was a fucking show for that, right? That would be a little weird, a little sketch. But look at this person, man. This content is clearly for people that are under the age of seven. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> We're talking about people that don't know their ABCs, people that can't fucking count. How the hell are you going to teach them about dysphoria? Dude, what? I was dysphoric as a 12 year old and I didn't even fucking understand all that shit until I kept learning. Like, dude, you're literally making content for fucking babies. Like, what the fuck? Now, I did a video about this demon a few years ago. And uh, you may be asking why I talk about her again then. Well, you know, like any incurable disease, she's back. And like any incurable disease, you got to stay on top of it or it comes back worse than before, which is the case with Miss Lindsay Amer. 
Miss, you can tell through the screen, she smells like hot dog water. Amer. <laughs> Yo, she definitely smell like hot dog water. <laughs> oh my God, dude, Blair funny as fuck. I'm not gonna lie. Blair gets some good jobs and, but dude. <laughs> Yeah, so um, people are uh, wondering, like, why is this person being brought up again? Like, I do remember this person back in the day. I never made a video on them at the time, or I, I don't think I did. I don't remember. But, you know, I never made a video on them because I, I didn't think it was worth it. But after seeing that little TikTok clip of them talking about kink and kids, I was like, you know what? It's about time to go in on her ass. And since Blair talked about it, and I was like, hey. Blair actually made like a decent video this time where you know like it, it's not harmful and I, I think like she made a really good point right so I was like fuck it let me go ahead and go in on this bitch but yeah they've been around for a while as a result of my original video dragging her and a lot of other people uh you know also covering her disgusting content predatory content she kind of fell off the radar but she's back and she's posting her episodes again new episodes and is getting more mainstream success and attention than ever which really says something about the current climate right that like there was a window of time where like it wasn't so hot of a look to be at very best predator adjacent but like in my opinion just in the thick of being a predator like that's her kids and kink can coexist and they can and should coexist with each other so now here's the big issue that Blair just mentioned. We're about to see a little bit more of that. Is this bitch is getting mainstream fucking attention now. You know, and it's so frustrating. Why is it always Dylan Mulvaney in, in the queer kids, bitch? Why are those the people that that get uplifted, right? Like, it's a, it's always the fucking people that, once again, what Blair was talking about in the intro clip that I put there, it's the tone. They fucking, they, they have, they know how to play the game. And the mainstream's like, oh, it's fucking soft shit, dude. What the fuck, man? But motherfuckers, that's real, right? Like, think about mainstream. They always hate on Joe Rogan. But if you go to Joe Rogan, motherfucker real. He not soft about shit. He don't give a fuck. He doesn't care. He just, he doing him. And people hate that shit. Because they want you to fall in line. Society wants you to fall in line. And they won't fucking show anyone that's not falling in line. It's going against the grain. It's saying, fuck y'all. Um, and that's fucked up, man. We, we, I, I hate mainstream, lamestream media. Fuck all that shit. It's the devil. And listen, for any of y'all that are somehow still blue pilled enough to see a title like queer kid stuff and to see someone with a smile as if a smile means that you're a good person. It's okay to be gay. For any of y'all that are fooled by that and want to say, oh, she's just teaching people about gay people. Why can't kids learn about gay people? We're going to wisen up to these tactics because that is not exactly what's happening here. And listen, I am not someone that believes in hiding certain realities of the world from children because if they're not getting information from you, they're likely to get it from a deranged bad source. And in modern society, a lot of kids are going to school and kids in their school may or may not have two moms or two dads. And so there is, I think, an age appropriate time to have that conversation and be like, listen, that's how some families do it. See, Blair brings up a great point. Now, me and a lot of other people I know, we grew up very sheltered. Our parents try to shelter us from these things. And we learn shit from the wrong fucking people, right? So that's a big issue. Now, however, whose responsibility is that of the child? Like, that's the parent's job, right? To make sure your kid is educated on these sorts of things. Now, educating other people's very young children and once again we have established that this content is for fucking like people that are under seven right this this content is not for like a third grader right they, they're watching spongebob and shit they, they don't fucking want to watch this shit it's for literal babies so why are you teaching someone else's literal baby about kinks and fetishes and, and, and dysphoria and all these things right like it, it's not necessary and it's gross is there anyone who thinks that Miss Lindsay Amer has an even remotely sane or rational grasp on what is age appropriate and when with content like, what is gender dysphoria? Me and my dysphoria monster. Yeah, gotta let them know about debilitating mental illness that is so bad you're relating it to being a monster. That's not scary. Drag queen makeup transformation. Yeah, change yourself, transform. Don't accept how you look, kids. Sesame Street was wrong. Don't have confidence with that change how you look entirely 
using that thing that 99.9% .9 of parents won't let you even use until you're in your late teens. What are pronouns? Oh. Notice how she didn't forget that party city wig. The leftist, diddler, wardrobe, staple. <laughs> I think I just have like bad wig PTSD, you know? Keep it cute, girl. Keep it real cute. I mean, so I really just included this clip so you could see the type of retarded content and like predatory content that this person's putting out. Like, what else needs to be said? I mean, you see the titles, you see that shit. If you don't get what's weird about it or, or inappropriate about it for children, for very young children, take a deeper look at yourself because you may not, you may not understand the difference between an adult and a child and like how children need to be protected man because like they're vulnerable children are malleable you know like they they're very very influenced by their environment let's get ready for election day you know they can't vote right what's an abortion anyway really maybe that thing that gay people don't even need because they're gay and can't get pregnant Am I, am I the crazy one here? Like, even if the topic of abortion in general was even remotely appropriate for a four-year-old to hear about, if the goal is to teach them about gay people, Halloween is a queer holiday. Really? So Halloween's gay now. That's a reach. Especially with those little dinosaur arms of yours. And then it gets even worse. So this bitch is so fucking off base that you're talking about election day and abortion, which dude, these aren't even inherently harmful or inappropriate topics, but it just, it just shows that like, okay, none of the shit that this person's talking about is for children or should be consumed by children. Why the fuck is this aimed at children? It, it makes no sense. These are not That's child right. topics. Notice the uh, GMA in the corner. Good morning, America. Now, as someone who has some experience in both the entertainment industry and experience with television and television networks, the amount of background checks that go into putting someone on, especially a morning show, a show like this that is the definition of mainstream, I mean, to say it's actually extreme is an understatement. And that's also why it's so dark sometimes when you see people like this, because someone had to co-sign things like this next video. I want to clarify this for a second here. I'm not saying that kink isn't kid friendly. I'm saying that kids and kink can coexist. I know what to do. You know what to do. Yeah, just wait for it. Whoa, is that really your friend? Have a seat, baby. Kids and kink can coexist. Juxtapose this with the video a second ago. It's okay to be gay. Ukulele, right? That's the real her in bed here, having her little dark thoughts, making a little late night TikTok about how kids and kink can coexist. How and why did this get on Good Morning America? Like, that's a good point. Someone had to see that TikTok and co-sign it and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. fuck, fuck the kids. <laughs> Dude, what? Man, fuck lame stream media. I'm telling you, it's the devil pride in a totally fine way there's a nuance here that making an event kid friendly doesn't mean sanitizing it aka taking something like kink out of pride making pride kid friendly is not the same thing as sanitizing pride making a pride event kid friendly or i i prefer kids safe is about making sure we're including and putting kid and youth voices Making pride safe would be sanitizing it, right? Not in your mind, because you want it dirty. Because you're dirty. Miss Lindsay Amer. That's literally what you're saying. Don't sanitize pride, because it's safe for kids. What are you talking about? Why do you specifically want to make it clear that you don't want it sanitized? Okay. So th this is the most alarming shit she could say. Making pride kid friendly does not mean sanitizing it. That's literally what making something kid friendly is. 
you remove the adult the inappropriate elements from something right what like i can't i cannot understand this there's no way it could be kid friendly if it's for adults right if it has kink if it has fucking sexual shit right it's not kid friendly it's not for kids it's for adults it's for grown folks shit right that shit needs to stay separate kids don't need to be exposed for that and what blair keeps saying in this video i didn't include the, these clips but the only fucking people that say shit like this are pedos that's the only fucking people that would say something like that like yeah uh, uh for, for pride it doesn't need to be sanitized to be kid friendly we keep it dirty dude what no kid friendly means it's sanitized those are synonyms you can't you can't fucking remove those two from each other that's literally what making it kid friendly is and including them in pride and particularly any justice spaces Kids and youth voices are vital to justice movements because they are a vulnerable and marginalized group on their own, which includes their intersecting identities and approach. Notice how she clocks that they're vulnerable. Yeah, we know. That's why you target them with your content, right? Right? So I'm not saying that kink is inappropriate for kids. I'm saying they can. How many times can you say it? She wants to make it so damn clear. Was that the third or fourth time you've said that phrase in this in the video? So you know they're just vulnerable, and yet you're saying all this, making this content. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you're not unaware or stupid. You know they're vulnerable, right? You, you know what you're doing. I've talked about my identity before, like how I identify as queer and as white and as Jewish and as a cisgender woman. Where are the accomplishments? See, I can't help but feel like society was probably in a much healthier, better place when people would describe themselves and lead with the things that they actually have a right to be proud of. You know, like, I'm a lawyer, I'm a carpenter, I'm a doctor, I'm an artist, I'm a musician. Like, nowadays, it's I'm queer, I'm white, I'm Jewish, I'm a woman. See, all these things that, you know, Society will tell you, be proud of it. But at least for me, I reserve pride for things that I work for, accomplish, attain, set a goal for and achieve, like those things. Not necessarily the circumstances of my birth. For real, for real. Blair makes a great point here. The identity politics needs to stop. It's so many people that don't have a personality beyond their identity. They don't have aspirations beyond their identity. Like, you know, the first thing I tell people is I'm a, I'm a rapper and I'm a content creator. Not I'm a fucking tranny. Because who, who, who the hell cares at the end of the day? You know, like it's important. Um, that's why I'm visible because I want to help other trans people. I want to make it a more normalized thing in society. That's why I make music. And that's why my music isn't like you see some trans artists and all they talk about is being fucking trans. Like, dude, like no one's going to relate to that shit but trans people. So I make my music is mostly about street shit. It's about how I came up. Anyone that came up in that environment or the fucking people that just like to gawk at that lifestyle. Y'all can do that. It doesn't make a difference that I'm trans. And that's what normal normalizes it and and when the, that's the importance of being visible as a trans person we got to remember that like our identities who we come from what we are our marginalized groups that's super important but it's not the whole package and it shouldn't be like the biggest thing in your life right like it, being trans huge part of my life not as big as being a rapper and a content creator anyways that's all we have for today if you haven't heard my new mixtape go ahead and peep it and also i dropped a new song on spotify well it's not a new song it's off the mixtape but it's a new song that's on my spotify it's also on all streaming platforms apple music wherever else you get your music you know um so yeah go and check that out anyways peace out bitches have a good one this my last chance so i gotta take it everybody talking shit they can never make it you would give up yeah you would stop some hate shit i'm working harder no i'm gonna make it take it take this fucking shit you could get it everybody knows that's just how i'm living that's how i'm rocking shut your fucking talking you know i'm a goblin they that shit no problem problem call phone them he gonna end it real quick still got some killer stalking around the shot they would do that shit you was always talking shit you ain't in this shit you stupid bitch why you switching on me and mine i'm not into that loyalty that's what i'm into speaking facts every time i pop out yeah they know that i'm on that yeah i'm on
track Yeah, I gotta get it, cause I'm working harder I play it, play it smarter, whoa This is just my life I can never understand, escape this fucking life I Work, work harder, fuck the street life I'ma be a rapper, get it, get it right You don't understand how hard it is every single night Pain and trauma swirl around my brain, it's not right I'm sick and demented, fucking twisted In my mind, I'm seeing death, fucking visions I can never get it, all my sins, I keep tripping Every single time, no, I'm slipping